Radiator sizing is the single most important thing when installing heat pumps, especially on older retrofits. Not only is it going to ensure that your heat pump actually works, it's the single biggest contributor to how well it works. Sizing radiators for boilers is actually pretty simple. The stated output in the catalog or online is exactly how much energy that radiator will give when it's sat at around about 70 degrees, and boilers will make it 70 degrees. The slight more complication we have with heat pumps is that they're much, much more efficient the lower temperature you go. Boilers are also more efficient the lower temperature you go, but heat pumps even more so. So if we have these radiators at much lower temperature, their output obviously drops. And this is where the complication comes in. The maximum temperature you really want your heat pump powered radiators is 50 degrees Celsius, although the lower the better. So do I need to upgrade my radiators for a heat pump? Welcome to the consumer series where you're gonna find out exactly that and anything else you need to know about renewable heating. The actual process to figure this out is really quite complex. First of all, you have to do longhand room by room heat loss calculations. Then you have to use what's called conversion factors, which basically multiply the radiator to make it bigger to give its relative output at a lower temperature. But this is Heat Geek and the Consumer Series, and we're here to simplify it for you. So once again, this is part of an article over on heatgeek.com. We will find all of this broken down for you and our cheat sheets. But if you're more of a video person, remember to sub to this channel and turn on notifications as it really helps us to keep this content free. Another reminder, this is not a replacement for real world calculations. This is just to get you in the ballpark and get an understanding of what you roughly need to do. Installers are gonna find this helpful too as it gives a really quick reference guide to find out if you need to upgrade the radiator. And if you do need to upgrade a radiator, exactly how big it needs to be, which means you can walk around with the customer and work out what works best for them without having to flick through a catalogue. So we need to work out in each room exactly how much power we need. So as always, we need to work out how much power we need when it's minus two or minus three outside. To do this, you can use our heat loss cheat sheet. I'll link to that above and below. Once we work out how many kilowatts or watts we need, we then need to work out if our existing radiator can output that amount of kilowatts or watts at its new 50 degree mean water temperature rather than the 70 degree it may have come from if it was a gas boiler previously. Now, the first thing you'll need to be aware of is the different types of radiator available. You have type 11, type 21, type 22, and type 33. If you look down at the top of your radiator, you'll know exactly what you have. The first number represents the amount of panels on the radiator, and the second number represents the amount of fins, convector fins, that are attached to the panels. So a type 11 would have one panel and one convector fin, Type 22 would have two panels and two convector fins on the inner edge. Now, if your radiators don't have these convector fins, you're probably gonna to need to upgrade anyway, purely due to age, let alone the reduced output they have. So, once you know what type of radiator you have, you simply have to measure the surface area of your radiator in meters squared. That's just the height times the width in meters, and multiply it by this cheat sheet table that we've developed here at HeatGeek. This table shows the amount of watts delivered per meter squared when your radiator is at 50 degrees C. If the amount of watts your radiator can produce at our new flow temperature of 50 degrees matches or exceeds the amount of watts needed in the room, you don't need to upgrade your radiators to have a heat pump. It will run just fine. So let's say that we need um, 500 watts in a room or 0.5 kilowatts. Measure the height in meters and multiply it by its width. If it's a 600 mil by 1200 mil type 22 radiator, we multiply 0.6 high by 1.2 wide as we need to do the calculation in meters, which gives 0.72 meters squared. And multiply this by the 1500 watts on our table. So this will give 1080 watts at our 50 degree flow temperature, which is actually way above the 500 watts needed and actually means your radiator will be able to run really low temperature and you'll have a lovely, nice, efficient system. Now, here's the kicker. If you come up short, you can use this exact same cheat sheet to find out the exact size radiator you need. Let's say you needed 1200 watts in a room. Typically, most people go for type 22 radiators as the power output to space it takes up in the room is just a nice ratio. Take the 1200 watts and divide by our 1500 watts per square meter equals 0.8 meters squared of radiator to fit in that room. Most radiators typically about 600 mil high. So if you divide the 0.8 by 0.6, you'll get 1.3. Now you know you just need to fit a 1.3 radiator somewhere. If you're struggling to fit one in there, you might want to divide it by 0.7 
and the, the width will come in and then you'll know you can get it in a smaller space. Using this method, you can go around with your installer or your customer if you're an engineer uh, and work out this kind of stuff very quickly on the fly rather than having to flick through catalogues and work out conversion factors. As mentioned previously, the lower the temperature you can go, the more efficient the heat pump. The table we gave previously was for a 50 degree radiator. Now we've developed here another table for a 40 degree radiator. So you could quickly work out if it would be worth it for you to upgrade, to grab that extra scop out of your heat pump. Some extra things to be aware of. This obviously assumes that you're not gonna cover up your radiators in some way by putting a shelf over it or hanging bags or coats over it, because that will restrict its output. It needs free air movement around for it to work most effectively. So here's a free tip that you weren't expecting from this video. If you've got a sofa sat right up against the radiator, perhaps it's time to maybe disrupt your feng shui a tiny bit and just pull it out slightly to give the air movement so it can operate. There is also high temperature heat pumps which can run up to 70, 75 degrees, but it's always best to go for low temperature as it will be much more efficient, cost less to run and be more comfortable. So if you're looking for a heat pump installation, make sure you check out our Heat Geek map where we've got installers all up and down the country that are very highly trained, or let us guarantee the installation with our Heat Geek Assured service. And I'll pop some information about that in the description. If you enjoyed this, make sure you subscribe for more renewable heating content, uh, hit the bell notifications icon, and make sure you comment and get engaged in the comments below. That really helps us sort of boost our channel and helps us put out all this free information that is hopefully helping you. Okay guys, that's it. See you in the next one. If you're a consumer and would like more advice on renewable heating, check out our consumer series playlist here on HeatGeek for all you need to know about renewable heating and energy.